Riley Foster is a goalkeeper who has represented Canada at numerous competitions at the youth level in 2021, received her first call up to the national team, and has most recently been plying her trade overseas with Liverpool. And now she will be a contributor here on our show, Good Night Australia, New Zealand on One Soccer, as we welcome you back. And we welcome Riley Foster. So great to have you on the show, Riley. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Always love when we get to talk women's World Cup action. And I want to pick your brain a little bit here. But before we do that, a lot of people did get to know you as you were representing Canada. But in particular, your story became really well known a couple years ago in October of 2021. There was a car accident. You broke your neck. A lot of people weren't just worried about your career, Riley. They were worried about your life. You've documented it on your social media pages. You were determined to get back on the pitch. How are you doing health-wise? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, it's been an incredibly long journey, I think, as of, what was it, two days ago? It was 636 days since the accident had happened, and in that time, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs. But um, I'm here now. I had an operation on my shoulder that I just need to clean up in April, um, but I'm 100% good to go clear to train and as fit as I could be, even stronger than I was before. Absolutely exceptional. It's so great to see you back on the pitch. And then from a professional standpoint, national team standpoint, uh, what does the future hold? What is it that you're hoping to achieve? Yeah, I'm looking to sign with the club in, in due time. Not too long now before that gets announced and is firmly established. But in between now and I'd say the end of the year, I just want to be back in Bev Priestman's ear. Um, the Olympics and the World Cup were big goals of mine. I didn't get the Olympics when I was healthy. And obviously, I was just short of being fit for the World Cup. So I want to be in Bev's ear now for the September camp and uh, help with qualifiers for the Olympics in 2024. Well, how about we talk a little bit about Bev Priestman at the moment and the team. Let's, uh, let's start there for you. What do you think Canada's chances are at this World Cup? I think we have a really good chance. I think with the squad we have, we have a lot of experience in Europe and internationally. Um, although we are down with some key players who are with injury, I think the players that are filling in um, are going to be able to step up to the plate with the experience that they have. I think once we get out of the group stage, it's going to be a lot more challenging. But with the way Dev coaches and the, the unity of the group, I'm not um, afraid or absolutely concerned that we're going to have an issue. Every game's going to be a hard one, but I know the way the team works, and I think it's going to be, be ready for a battle. So you're pretty confident they will get out of the group? 100%, yeah. All right. Bev Priestman, this is somebody you know. This is you know somebody that uh, you've been part of camp with. What do you think she's focusing in on right now with the team as they prepare for their first game? I think most coaches or most people would assume that you would focus on your opposition and whatnot, and there will be a, an emphasis on that, but Bev likes to focus on what's going on in-house perfecting our craft, perfecting on what we do best, the fine details that will make a difference in the game, whether it's the midfielder's position or the angles, the way the back are spreading or moving the ball around, and the way the nines, the sevens, and elevens are attacking the ball. So everything in-house will be very specific to what the team needs to do to be the best version of themselves. And as the games go on, they'll tailor some things just to make sure that they're taking care of the threat to the opposite teams. What kind of coach is she in training? I know she also comes from the school of John Herdman, who's the master motivator. Is she similar or is she hard and you dare not make a mistake in practice? I think Bev's very similar. I've never been afraid to make a mistake under her care. Um, she's always been very motivating, just as John was. Um, and I think that stems from the off the pitch uh, behaviors and activities that we do to prep ourselves and to unleash the fearlessness and the bravery. And that was one of the big focuses I recall from my previous camps is being brave, being brave on the ball, being brave off the ball, being brave in camp. So she allows that free space and that safe place for all the players to explore their talents and try new things. And I think that's the, the difference that'll take us to the next level and have a competitive edge against the other teams. You know, going back to the Olympics in Tokyo, uh, the team winning gold, we know a name that stood out, and of course, that's Steph Labe. No surprise, Canada has great goalkeepers, especially on, on, on the women's side, too. And she's retired now. And Kaylin Sheridan is stepping in to that spot. This is somebody you've also trained alongside. Why should Canada have faith in Kaylin Sheridan now? I think the one thing that we all have to remember is that Kaylin has been following in Steph's footprints for a long time. Uh, she's had at least two to three years underneath Steph and watching and learning and perfecting her craft to be prepared for moments like these. Um, she's also had numerous opportunities in 
international matches where she can step up, but also how she plays against the world's best in the NWSL goes to show how she does under pressure and what she can do. She's a great shot stopper and a great distribu distributor. Um, so I think we won't be missing Steph besides her personality, but Kaylin is securing goal. Um, and I have nothing but pure confidence in her. Yeah, I asked Christine St. Clair about the mottos that they like to come up with. And she says, you know, Steph LeBay was the one who came up with a lot of those. So now we have to be creative on our own without her. But Kaylin shared, and obviously she also plays behind Vanessa Gill, Kadisha Buchanan. How important is that for a goalkeeper with your center backs and having that strong relationship? It's absolutely essential. I think having that strong triangle um, is important. We got to know the person in and out of the game. You got to know what their behaviors are like on and off the ball. And to do that, it, it takes a lot of time, communication. And the one thing about those three is that they are very close. The team already is a very united group, but those three get on so well and they communicate so well off the pitch and it shows on the pitch. They have each other's backs. They know each other's movements and their tendencies. So being able to do that makes the game a little bit easier and a little bit more predictable in the sense of threat and danger when the attack is coming on. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been so easy talking to you. I'm going to keep you around for the next segment. You're going to stick around and join me with Jordan and Jess. Also stick around for One Soccer Today. That airs Tuesdays and Thursdays right here on One Soccer. This is where we break down the game, all the big stories from across the globe with a focus, of course, on Canada. So, yes, we're going to now take a trip around the Women's World <coughs> Cup, talk about some other teams and players to watch. But in particular, Riley, Jess tells me, you broke her nose once upon a time? What is that all about? It's Good Night Australia, New Zealand, brought to you by CIBC. We are just days away from Canada kicking things off against Nigeria at the 2023 Women's World Cup. We've been talking a lot of Canada. We're going to go around the World Cup in just a moment, though. Welcome back to the show. Andy Jordan and Jess rejoining me. Riley Foster still sticking around, and I teased this going to break, so we need to know the story. Tell me about this broken nose situation. Yeah, so basically it was training. I want to put that out there. We were on the same team. Um, it was the beginning of our senior season together. Um, and basically the ball came in, 50-50 ball. And instead of hitting the ball, she hit my face. And just Thanks. a clean break right from the side. And the best part about this is that the ball still went in the net. You still scored. Where was this? Oh, no, no. I was on her team. I was defending. Oh. Yeah. So it was a very unnecessary punch is what I'm trying to say. She might have did it on purpose. So, so. you punched your own <laughs> defender. Defend yourself, Riley. What happened? Okay. From what I recall, we were working on set pieces or crosses. And Jess just decided to head the ball towards me. And I decided to punch her in the head. <laughs> that is not what happened. I did not head the ball. I was Honestly, looking it just annoyed at you. me that way. Mm. All, all I heard was Riley during the commercial break say, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Because she felt favorite? like she improved I, things. You know what? I'm offended, but it's fine. <laughs> I, I'll get over it. But you know what, Riley? I don't think I like you very much right now. That is <laughs> tough. That, that, that is a tough one. Where, where was this again? West Virginia University. West, so. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. There we go. The story <laughs> is out there. You at home, pick your side.